Hey guys, Spider Richard here, and today I am doing a video for all of you to hopefully show you exactly how I do what I do, which is make video game videos. So I've had requests from users asking just exactly how I record my videos, well the gameplay footage for YouTube videos, how I also stream using my Mac, and I've also been asked how I edit my videos. So in the next, so for three videos, I'm going to be showing you exactly what I do behind the scenes, all, all the magic that goes into making the videos. So for this video, we're going to be covering exactly how we record videos for YouTube. So I'm going to be talking about my capture card, which I use to capture the gameplay footage. I'm going to be talking about my sound card, which I use to capture the voice of the sound. And I will also be talking about the software which I use in order to uh, record and capture all the gameplay footage that I uh, upload. So if you've watched the previous video, which has been me explaining my setup, which is right here behind me, then you will know that I use the Elgato HD30, which is a bit of an older capture card, which you can uh, hopefully see here. La, 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 la. Yes, a bit of an older capture card, but it still does the job fantastic for what we're trying to do here. So the Elgato HD30 is a nifty little bit of kit, and it is very, very simple to use, and this is the reason why I use this capture card, because it is absolutely brilliant. It is just, it's, it's just, it looks like a little black box, and it can sit on top of your desk or anywhere, and it is so simple. It, is, it's, it couldn't be easier to set up. It has three slots on it. Well, it has four, but we don't really use the audio the audio slot on this bit. It has a HDMI slot on the front and it has a HDMI slot on the back. Also, on the front where the input is for the HDMI cable, it has a USB that goes from the Elgato to your computer. So like I said, what we do is we capture our gameplay footage with this. So you have your Xbox on the table, like I've got here, and you have this going to the Elgato HD60. So you have a HDMI cable that goes out the back into the Elgato, and then the Elgato sends that signal to the computer using the USB slot on one side, and then you send the signal from the Elgato to your TV. It sounds complicated when I'm explaining it, but it couldn't be easier, which I'll show you in a second. Oh, damn it, why did the dog shut up the second I started talking? What are you doing? What are you doing? So the second bit of kit that we need is for our voice. Now when we're doing our voiceovers on the videos, we like to get the quality as crisp as possible. So we're going to need ourselves a microphone. What I've got here is an SM58. You'll remember this from the other video if you've watched it. And we need this going to an audio interface. Now mine is underneath the desk right about here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a picture on the screen so you should be able to see it right about here. This is the one that I've got. This is the Scarlett 2 in and 2 out audio interface. I've liked this one because it's very pretty and it's a nice red color. So that is all the equipment. Let me show you how it is set up. Here we are around the back of my setup and what I've got here is I've got a monitor arm which uh, holds the TV on the back and there's my Xbox down there. And what we've got here is the Elgato HD30. Now that's the one I was talking about earlier on where this is our capture card and it's got a slot on one side for the HDMI from the Xbox and it's got a slot on the other side from the HDMI that goes to the TV which is here. So this bit goes to that side and then the other bit goes around here a couple of times because the HDMI cable is really long and goes back down into the Xbox. So signal comes in, it's sent out from a USB here as well and the USB goes whoop to the computer and the HDMI cable goes whoop to the TV so we can see our Xbox on the screen. So now for our microphone which is going to be capturing our audio. So this is my SM58. I used to use this when I was in a band and gigged a lot but now I use it mostly just to record my audio for my gameplay voiceovers. So this is going along this XLR cable here at the back. Let me just focus in on that. It goes down this mic stand which is attached to the desk and then it goes under the desk Da, 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 da. And it goes to the front of this device right here, which is my audio interface. Now I've got it jammed in there, it doesn't look like it's too secure, but rest assured, that is a, it's a nice, comfortable bit of kit right there. So like I said, that goes in there, and it's got a bunch of, a bunch of things on the front, but you don't really need to worry about a lot of it. All you need to worry about is that first slot on the side, because we're not using headphones in here. And we're not using the, the monitoring, which is that big switch there. We just want that to go. We just want that to have our mic wire and the gain turned up a little bit so we can see a signal coming into the computer. And now on the back, we have this grey USB cable, which goes out of there, along here, and we'll go up into the other side of the computer in one of the USB slots. So like I said, 
This is the audio interface one. Goes straight in the USB slot there. And this is the capture card that just goes in the second USB slot. Easy. Now that's all the equipment that we need. Now let's talk about the software. Oh, wow, the audio quality just got a lot better, didn't it? That's because I'm using my microphone. I'm not using the, uh, the camera mic anymore. So anyway, let us take a look at the software that we are using in order to capture our gameplay footage. So I have got the Game Capture HD here, which is the program that I use to capture the footage from the Elgato. Now, if you haven't got this and you've bought yourself an Elgato or you want to buy yourself an Elgato, then you can download the software from the Elgato website, which is here. And I'm just at elgato.com forward slash en. I think that means so it makes the site in English. But anyway, if you're here and you want to get the software, you can just go to gaming. And you should be able to find all the gear. So if you do want to buy yourself a capture card, there be some should be some stuff here, and uh, there should be an option if you click on this thing up here, download. You should be able to get yourself the latest version for your Mac, and uh, there's a one for Windows as well if you're on a Windows machine. That is how you download the capturing software. So let us have a look at the capture software itself. So let me just open it real quick. So when you first open the Game Capture HD software, you will most likely be greeted by a screen that looks something like this. Looks a bit complicated. Ah, trust me, it is not. So what we've got on the right-hand side here is a bunch of little drop-down things which should hopefully tell you a bit of information about what you've got plugged in and what's going on. So we've got Elgato HD, we've got the 1080 30 card here so that is telling us exactly how much our card can capture and at what frame rate it will capture as well so that's what we've got there that's what's plugged in we've also got the gameplay audio here but because we've got no game playing and we've also got the previews turned off down here nothing's going to be shown up here we've got a little tab for live streaming we've got a little tab for the live commentary but we do not need that because we have our live commentary being recorded by a separate program which will be explained soon so we do not need that and this is the second part we will need so what we do here is we will take this and we will put in a title for our video. Now this is going to be, this is going to create a folder with this name. So hopefully this should make it a bit easier to find on your computer. So we'll just call it my awesome gameplay footage. Right, there we go. So if you keep it as that, then they'll make a file somewhere. Oh, sugar, I've spelled awesome wrong. There we go. So is that right? Doesn't look right. Did I spell that right? Awesome. Doesn't matter. Anyway, if it's wrong, it's wrong. So this will name a folder that somewhere on your computer and we'll put everything that you record using this software in that folder. So it should be nice and easy to find now. So now that we've done that, what do we do? Well, we've got our Elgato plugged in, but we can't see anything. It's because I have disabled this because when you were recording, it makes it a lot easier on the computer if it doesn't see any of what's being captured and doesn't make any noise as well. Because doing that stuff and trying to capture at the same time is a bit taxing and can make your computer, if it's lower specs, uh, like absolutely glitch out and go really weird. So I find it's best just to disable the preview and disable the audio. So we can see that my HD HD capture card is sending this signal to my computer, which is my Xbox home screen. So we've got seven days to die up there, and we've got uh, just just a general Xbox home dashboard or whatever it's called. And once again, because we've got no sound coming in, we will not see anything on this little daily right meow. But a good little tip for you is just make sure that this thing is set to zero, because then it'll record the gameplay volume exactly how it should be. And later on, when you come to edit it, you can make the volume whatever you want in the software later on. So don't worry about that. Just leave it at zero and make sure there's a green bar here going whoop, 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 whoop when the game's being played. So that is pretty much it. So I'm just going to disable these things so it doesn't make the computer go absolutely mental and go because my computer is pretty pants. And really, the only thing that you need to do now once you've got your audio set up and you are ready to record is hit the record button, which is down here on the left hand side. And when you press it, boom, it show up nice and red and should record for a little bit. And then once you've finished recording and you've finished your lovely video, hit it again and you are done. So now you see it's got my awesome gameplay footage up here. Let us find that folder on my computer. So we're going to the finder and I usually keep all my footage in my movies folder on the game capture HD library. So you can see here I've got my awesome gameplay footage. And if we play the video, we should see 
just the the home screen of the Xbox being played for a few seconds. Yeah, see, there you go. And you can see the player moving, which means it's an actual video. Probably would have been better if I'd uh, actually played a game and shot it for you, but you get the idea. So that is that. Now let us discuss audio. So we've got our audio interface set up and everything. And the program I like to use is Ableton Live Suite 9. Now I would not advise you guys downloading this if you're just using it for a gameplay voiceover because it is expensive and you probably will not be wanting to use it for your gameplay, uh, gameplay footage. So yeah, you can see it is recording the audio that I'm speaking right now. So like I said, using the audio interface, this program is just recording a, just recording whatever we're saying. And the reason I like to use this is because I use Ableton a lot anyway, and I'm quite familiar with it. On the other hand, what can you use instead and what would I advise using instead if you are not going to buy Ableton? I would probably, if you're on the Mac, advise if it's got the get option beside it and it's actually free. I don't know if I've already bought it, but maybe you can use GarageBand. Like, I'm pretty sure it does the same sort of thing. Like, all you've got to do is set the audio inputs from the audio interface rather than from rather from uh, the mic that's on your computer, and that's quite easy to do. So I'll show you a quick example in Ableton. There should be something rather similar in GarageBand as well. So if you go up to File and or, or the the GarageBand thing, which should be under the same thing as Live right there, and you go into Preferences, there'll be an audio input device right here, and you can see I've got the Scarlett 2i2, which is the audio interface under my desk, and I've got that input set to, well, I've got the audio input device set to that, so that's my mic. Going in here and making sound. Easy. Pretty damn easy. So it should be pretty similar in the garage band. Just set yourself up one track, an audio track, and make sure the audio is coming from the audio interface. Pretty simple stuff. I've got a bunch of things down here which you really don't need to worry about. Like this is just a bit of compression on the voice, a bit of EQ, although all these things you probably won't notice. So yeah, that is how I do that. I uh, I use Ableton, but I would, I'd probably advise using GarageBand if you're on the Mac. It does the same sort of thing. Probably a lot simpler to use as well. So yeah, that is that is how you do that. Once you're ready to record, just hit the record button. It should be the same on most things, just a little red circle. Uh, hit that. And then once the audio's rolling, go into your gameplay footage thing. Hit the record button there. And then start recording your videos. And then export the footage. Or export the audio. And that's it. That is pretty much it. Pretty simple stuff. Pretty damn simple stuff. So hopefully in the next video, uh, well, in the next video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I stream using my setup. And uh, in the next video after that, I will show you how to edit yourself a video using all the equipment and all the, all the things you've learned in this video and all the things you've seen in the previous video. I will show you how to edit a video very quickly and then, then upload it to YouTube and what software to use. So if you've liked this one and found it helpful, leave a thumbs up or a like, whatever it is called, and I will hopefully catch you in the next video, and I'll make a little playlist and put it here. So if you want to watch the rest of them, it should be there somewhere. So anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching, and keep recommending those videos to make because it is very helpful. I'll catch you in a bit.